Ms. Leitner. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to thank the mayor's office for their work on this proposal. I know that we do share the common goals of protecting our neighborhoods and our children while providing safe and compassionate access for those with serious and legitimate medical issues. Um, this is not an easy issue. We on this city council know all too well how difficult it can be to strike the right balance between these competing needs. This council, especially council staff, worked long and hard to come up with an ordinance that we thought would work, both for our neighborhoods and for those patients looking for respite from their illnesses. Unfortunately, we were never able to see how well the ordinance would work or what adjustments needed to be made because of the ill-advised efforts to repeal the ordinance on the ballot. I warned at the time this council was forced to repeal the 2011 ordinance to avoid a costly election battle that we'd be back to square one. There would be no rules of the road and medical marijuana collectives would not be permitted. The result has been truly unfortunate. The city has been engaged in the costly enforcement and prosecution of dispensaries and collectives. This has only made it more difficult for those truly in need to have safe, compassionate access to medical marijuana. I think we can all agree that the current situation is untenable and needs to be remedied quickly. I agree with my colleague, Councilmember Emerald, and would like to see the city attorney draft an ordinance very similar to the one this council passed in April 2011 and have it back here at council as soon as is humanly possible. In 2011, my communities weighed in on the original ordinance. They supported that ordinance because it offered compassionate use while protecting the safety and character of our neighborhoods. The community groups I represent also made clear that they wanted to see as a minimum a process three conditional use permit, and their position has not changed since 2011. They are not supportive of the suggested revisions. Four of my six planning groups have weighed in on this, and um, they are quite adamant about their position on the proposal. With that said, I do not want this to be the end of the discussion. Even if the council adopts an ordinance similar to the one passed in 2011, I would like to see further outreach to the community on this issue. In addition, I would like the police department and other city departments tasked with enforcement to weigh in on this ordinance. Um, I would also like to see this council review how the ordinance is working or not working in the coming months. And I don't want it to be a long, drawn-out process. I would like timely updates at council so we ensure that we are effectively meeting the needs of our neighborhoods while providing the safe, compassionate access. If we are not, if the ordinance is either too lax or too strict, then we as a council can make the necessary adjustments. We do need to act quickly because the current situation is a disservice to all who are involved. And I would um, second Ms. Emerald's motion. I note that um, I was under the impression that we might make a request to have a study done on where the sensitive receptors are and how they affect the available sites. Yeah, and uh, I know we've been doing that in our district, and also we wanted uh, to look at whether or not that original ordinance truly was a ban, because I, I don't believe it was, but uh, I think that we should do some objective study to, to see if it effectively is a ban, uh, if that's okay to add. So I, I would recommend adding that to the okay. motion. Very Please. good, yeah but not to slow up the ordinance coming forward. Hmm? Yeah. But not to slow down an ordinance coming forward and right. try and get that as soon as possible. And direct to full council? Okay, thanks. The, Mr. Goldsmith. If I could just ask for a clarification. The, um, the study having to do whether there's a de facto ban would, would be something that would be done by the, through the mayor's office? Rather? Okay. A third party? A third party, but, but not through our office. We're going to stick to the law. We're not policy. No, Mr. City Attorney. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Ms. Zaff? Okay, well, that changes the direction I was going. Um, now, I need a clarification. Are we then talking, the ordinance that was brought forward uh, by the mayor, is that just 
off off the table here. I, I believe that's Ms. Emerald's motion, and it is very similar to the motion which was um, made in closed session. Well, I had a lot of concerns on this issue last time around because the map, um, it, well, District 6, most of the dispensaries would have been located in my district, and I think Mr. Alvarez. And the, the new one, um, if you look at it, if you take out the air base, uh, it would be allowed in just about half the district. And there are zones everywhere that I know, uh, and I've looked in, in different, even in your district, literally uh, an allowed zone right across the street from Curry Elementary School. Um, so there are those areas that are literally right next to schools and daycare centers and all that. But if we're not talking about that, um, then it's a little bit different. That said, um, well, I will move on with a couple of things. It sounds like um, Ms. Leitner's community weighed in, but I know my, my community groups did not weigh in. And I really think that the people, the people in the neighborhood um, should have an opportunity. These are their neighborhoods. They should be able to weigh in on how they feel about um, any kind of um, you know, pot shops going into their neighborhoods. And so you know, the, the business improvement districts, you know, small businesses, PTAs, um, town councils, I think that they should have an opportunity to weigh in as well. Um, as you're moving forward, and that the, the mayor's office um, should go out into the community, get the input from community groups, and, and not just, you know, from the people who, who came uh, here today. This is their neighborhoods. Um, you know, I have, you know, um, other concerns. Um, what, I, I, what I'd like to see is a breakdown of whatever is being proposed um, how, how many overall square footage would be allowed to be zoned um, in each of our districts and, and just kind of like the, the, you know, top to bottom, how much, who has the most and who would be zoned the least. Is that, you know, if, um, I'd like that in um, whatever is done. I'd like uh, also um, to ask the city attorney, I wanted a legal opinion on the viability of both you know, what I've been reading about in the paper, this excise tax that there seems to be a lot of confusion about, as well as um, the sales tax, you know, the legality, how other jurisdictions in California, if any, are, are doing this. Is that possible to do that? I've read the same accounts in the, in the newspaper, in fact, this morning, that um, the mayor said that it's fine, and it's majority vote, and no and the excise tax is fine. Um, so why would we have to research it? Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I've never heard of a local excise tax, and I've, um, I don't believe that, it, that there is one. I certainly don't see it being exempt from Prop 13. Uh, but there are, uh, the, the motion would ask us to look at different options for cost recovery and, and funding beyond that. We will do that. There are other options that would be available probably uh, with with voter approval but some of them may not be so we'll, we'll give you the we'll give you some options that, that was one of the other ones you know what would be I, well i wanted to ask if it's possible to determine the legality of a cap a lot of people mentioned uh, like a, fi a cap a finite number and then how much it would you know can can you limit the number of stores limit them by council district and then um, first of all if that's even if that's legal and then second, um, I also wanted to know, well, what's the additional cost of all of the, the vice, the code compliance? And that's, you know, what's the, the cost of that? Because we, we don't have enough police to go around to, to deal with this, too. The cost is, is beyond the scope of what we could do. I, tell, I will tell you that, as I mentioned, that it was costly, the enforcement we dealt with. I will say, and I do want to make this point, that the idea of having a, an ordinance where they may legally be located really helps on enforcement because then there's no excuse and we will focus in on on if then some who don't play by the rules and to that extent and limited extent i kind of agree with mr lake from the standpoint let's let's put it let's you policymakers making that decision would be very helpful to everybody involved so that you know what the ground rules are right now the ground rules are they're not allowed anywhere so I, but as far as the cost and, and the limits, you asked about the limits. I know there's a legal issue having to do with Los Angeles about that. We'll take a look at that 
and we will include that within our a memo as to whether there is the option of limits. And if I may, just one more um, question here. Um, I also, a lot of people mentioned it, I was um, glad to hear Ms. Emerald mention it, I, a thousand, I think a thousand feet is more appropriate uh, of both, and if we can get a list of schools that are both public and private, and there's uh, child care facilities at YMCA's, They're, you know, the kids are watched at YMCA's, Boys and Girls Club, public parks, um, you know, if those are all clarified in there, um, that's what it sounded like Ms. Emerald wanted. And, um, yeah, uh, like Ms. Leitner said, police, very critical to weigh in on this. So I think I've got all of the, um, all the points out there that, that I wanted to share. Um, oh, um, also to provide one more uh, for the city attorney, how this would mesh with federal law. I mean, that's really... Okay, that, I'll answer that question. Then our, our lead lawyer on the land use ordinance, um, Shannon Thomas, has a, a question. Okay, but on the federal law, whatever we do here doesn't change federal law. Mm -hmm. um, the federal law, under federal law, um, possession, cultivation, for any purpose, is a crime. And the fellow who, who really controls that is up there. Not up there, I'm sorry. Up there, uh, the president. And really, that's the source of the solution to this problem is, is really on the federal level. Anything we do here doesn't protect people from being prosecuted or asset forfeiture um, in that any, if there's drugs, um, whether it be marijuana or others that are, are illegally being sold or um, manufactured on a particular, in a building, um, the owner, uh, may lose that building under asset forfeiture. Uh, the issue of protection of city employees, we cover a little bit in our memorandum of law. No, no employee of any government has been prosecuted. Um, but as we go forward, we, we hope that that will be clarified by the courts. If not, we'd, we'd have to discuss uh, you know, how we deal with that um, and to be comfortable. But it's, it's, a, it's a risk, but it's a... I will point out, I mean, I don't want to make a bigger deal out of it than it is. We cover that. But those are all, federal law does present an issue for us in that it is clearly a federal crime. And uh, as, we've, as we've talked about many times here, absolute general fund protection. So, uh, As far as the general funds, if we're going to have a questionable tax, then the question is who gets indemnified and, and all that. We'll get right into that. You guys know all about that stuff. Right. And we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Um, what I I'm getting the idea on a, on the direction is that we're going to come back with a form. As I believe a council member Emerald discussed it in that first a form based upon 2011 with some changes that she's proposing. But in that first reading, you're going to make some policy decisions probably to refine it because there's some issues in there that our lawyers are going to say. Well, what do we do here? And I, I'm going to say give them some options rather than us just make, filling in the blanks. So we'll come back. We'll come back with something if that's the will of the, the council. All right, thank you. Uh, if, if, yes, if, yes, if our lawyer Thomas can ask a question, Chad and Thomas. Thank you, Council Member um, Emerald. I had a couple of questions about your changes to the definitions. Um, the youth serving definition. Um, we we could use some input from the council as to what you would like that to be. Um, you you would like for it to be included and to be more specific. But but what is it that you would like to? have it address. So some input on that would be useful. Um, you wanted the reference to child care facilities changed, I believe, to child care centers. Child care facilities is already defined in the Land Development Code, and it does include child care centers. So if um, I, I don't know if you care to make one of your staff available as we work through some of the issues yes, that you've uh, raised. Uh, Tim Taylor from our staff will be available to address your okay, questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 